Uh, very good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this workshop, uh, CSERTS, uh, Global Dialogue with Cyber Incident Responders. Uh, I welcome you all very much. Uh, thank you for coming, even you know, if, <laughs> even 8.30, early in the morning. Uh, my name is Koichiro Spaki Komiyama from uh, JP Cert, Japan Computer Emergency Response Team. Uh, and I work as a uh, director for Global Coordination Division at JP Cert. Um, like many of you here, uh, I'm enjoying the, uh, my third IGF, uh, my, my third in-person IGF. Uh, it's lovely to see the, uh, you know, uh, lovely to see just the fact people getting together in a, in a same big room uh, and share the space with each other. Uh, also, uh, it, it's, it's, it's fantastic to see the uh, diversity of participants this time. Think uh, prepared to previous one. Uh, I think uh, maybe the charm of Kyoto or uh, you know weak Japanese Yen. Uh, we 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 succeed to get all the people uh, coming flying fly to Japan, and uh, we had a great boost of ex exhibition in the hallway. Uh, bento lunch boxes are all excellent, and we see the uh, fire fireworks at Gara, and. So today for this workshop, um, let me begin with, um, can I, may I show the, the two panelists online? So uh, what I like to do uh, with this workshop is um, CERT, Computer Emergency Response Team, or CCERT, uh, Computer Security, again, Incident Response Team, is an organizational unit uh, that provides service and support to defined constituency for preventing, detecting, handling, handling, and responding to computer security incidents. Um, and it used to be recognized as a firefighters in internet or cyberspace. When there's a fire, a uh, firefighter come to rescue you. In the case of cyber security incidents or uh, cyber breaches, a CSERT come to your place to rescue you or system, system administrator or cybersecurity uh, cyber team. Um, if it was first established in 1988, so 35 years ago, um, immediately after the mass computer virus outbreak called Morris Worm, uh, it hit, it crashed uh, one, one in 10 uh, email servers at that time. But again, 1988. So immediately after this case or incident, uh, US Department of Defense uh, convened a meeting with inviting all the stakeholders and decide to launch a new organization or team to share the uh, uh, remediation or mitigation uh, with, with everyone else. So, so that's the first third computer emergency response team. A lot has happened since then. Uh, we have now many CSERTs around the globe. Uh, for example, Japan, uh, we have more than 500 CSERTs in, for example, companies like Sony, NTT, and others. Um, and uh, some CSERTs work to protect employees. Some of them, uh, they, are to, uh, they are to protect their products and services and then others, for example, the, uh, some, some others represent own government or country and work as a national point of contact. So CSERTs in their role also need a cooperation across the, across the border because cybersecurity incidents are pr pretty international or global by its nature. Um, and that means simply because the fact cybersecurity incidents uh, are international or global, uh, we need to form a regional or international collaboration scheme. Um, right now, we have several uh, international or regional CSET collaboration forum, namely, for example, uh, APSET in Asia, uh, AFRICSET in Africa, uh, TFC set in Europe, uh, 
uh, OIC said, th this is not a regional, but uh, the, uh, the sponsored by organization of Islamic, uh, Islamic countries. So it's a culture backed up by uh, cultural uh, international organization. And uh, we have a few new kids on the block, for example, Pakistan in Pacific Islands and uh, ASEAN third for uh, 10 uh, Southeast Asian uh, ASEAN member states. However, cooperation among CSID is facing, facing these significant challenges. Uh, you can see various reasons or obstacles the, you know, that cause uh, CSIRT cannot share or cannot talk to, to their counterpart in another country, frankly. But I think uh, we'd like to ask uh, our distinguished partners to introduce uh, several challenges we, uh, they see, they witness regionally or internationally. So, uh, let me explain the structure of this panel. Uh, we have a short period of time, just, on, just an hour. So we are going to break this into three distinct chunks. Uh, first, we invite three panelists, uh, two from remote, uh, one sitting with me here. Uh, ask three panelists to introduce what first AP third, Africa third, uh, for, for who they are, and uh, what, what, what are the challenges for them and, and others. And in the second segment, uh, I will throw several questions to those panelists. And the last part, the third segment, is a QA session with you. So yeah, please prepare a good question for our, for our panelists. Now, uh, thank you so much, Karim, for your patience. Now, without further ado, uh, I, let me introduce you our panel. Uh, first, we have Serge online. He's a current board member of FIRST, uh, Forum of Incident Response Team. Uh, he's also a former chairperson of FIRST, uh, leading this international uh, global organization. Uh, he also worked with or affiliated with Ministry of Foreign Affairs Switzerland. Uh, so he's, the, he's our first panelist. Now second, uh, we have Masa sitting next to me. Uh, she works for JP Cert, so we, <laughs> Uh, we work for the same organization, uh, and uh, one of her main roles is serving AP Cert, Asia Pacific Wide Sea Cert Committee, as a secretariat. Then uh, we have uh, Mr. Karim Usmani. Uh, he has been leading SAT Mauritius, SAT MU, uh, a national sea set of Mauritius. Uh, in this workshop, he also represents African Sea Cert Community, Africa Cert. Uh, where he play a critical role. Uh, he also participated the uh, last round, sixth round of UNGG uh, on cyber uh, as, w as one, of, one of 25 or 26 experts. So thank you all, <laughs> thank you all uh, for joining us, even though it is the middle of the night for Karim and Saoj, uh and very early for Masa. So let us jump in to first segment, uh, Saoj. Uh, I first like to ask you to share with, with us uh, who's first as an organization and its community. Uh, I also like to know how it helps secure the cyberspace. So, Selj, the uh, floor is yours. Thank you, Sparky, and uh, welcome everybody to this session on C Search. Sparky, you already mentioned that uh, first was started more than 30 years ago to bring instance response teams together. And that's what we still are. It's actually in the name. It's a forum, the forum of instance response and security teams. We bring together security teams <coughs> so they can work together. Uh, cybersecurity incidents never respect boundaries because the internet is something that doesn't respect boundaries. So instance responders have to work together and they need a place where they can start to meet. Typically instance responders don't have non-disclosure agreements or contracts that kind of regulate how they should work together, how they should treat confidential information. And we often treat confidential information because you don't really want to talk publicly about things that have gone wrong. So FIRST provides the forum or a platform where these teams can work together. 
it started out 30 years ago with a couple, a handful of teams in the United States, and then slowly started expanding to Europe and Asia. And now first really is a global organization with members from more than 100 countries. We currently have nearly 700 teams, which are members, compromising more than 5,500 instance responders that need to work together on a daily basis, exchanging information. Um, a couple of years ago, this was still kind of a fairly easy. The internet didn't have that, that importance that it has today. Also, the world was a lot less polarized. But now things are starting to get more difficult. We have more and more polarization. We have political opinions that diverge. But Sparky mentioned instance responders are like firefighters. Firefighters don't typically argue in front of a fire who is right, who is wrong, whose house this is. Your job is to extinguish the fire, and that's our job. But this political environment makes it kind of hard to actually do this. And just one example is sanctions that often prevent us from working together. We have certain countries where we have no members because we would probably run into issues with sanctions from other countries. And that is a challenge because the internet still connects to all these places. So while I feel uh, first is a success story and instance response is a success, I think the internet is usable. We all do e-commerce despite all the horror stories about cybercrime we hear about, the horror stories we hear about malicious cyber operations, we all can use the internet globally in the West, in the East, in the South and in the North. But we need to make sure that we can continue doing this and, uh, and despite different political opinions and, and conflicts that instance responders can continue working together. That is the big challenge for us is, is uh, facing today. And I think with that, I want to hand on over to Massa to tell us a little more or to Sparky to introduce Massa. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you know, the, you first mentioned uh, the, the global nature of CSET community uh, first. Uh, and I was surprised to hear uh, you have more than 700 membership right now. And still, uh, the broad membership is suffering, or the, the, it has a common challenge. Uh, like us in Asia, the polarization, uh, even among uh, engineers uh, or firefighters work on the ground. Um, well, I, I still believe your, your success story will continue. Uh, but anyway, um, I think it's, it's your time, Masa. Uh, I'd like to know, again, what is AP third and why you need a regional collaboration, even though we have an organization like FIRST. Uh, and I'm also curious if there's any change in your community uh, for the last few years. Anyway, uh, Master, please, the uh, floor is yours. Right, good morning. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is Masai Toyama from um, JP Third uh, Coordination Center. Um, I'm currently serving as a secretariat of AP Third. Um, first of all, it's great honor for me to be a speaker with three of you, um, Sparky, Bibi, uh, Sparky, and Selji, and um, Harim, who have contributed so much to the third communities. Um, as I said, EPSAR is a forum of the Asia-Pacific region. My job is to manage the infrastructure and support event management to ensure uh, episode runs smoothly. So uh, it's, I'd be happy to speak from um, the viewpoint of the secretariat who uh, takes care of administrative duties. Um, yeah, back in the episode, episode was formed in uh, February 2003. So it's like two, 20 years anniversary this year. And uh, JPSAT has been in charge of secretariat since its establishment. And uh, we've been coming so far to uh, very uh, nicely. Um, since the episode is a, a voluntary community of 33 teams from 24 countries and economies 
from India in the West to Tonga in the West. Um, yeah, so uh, member cities are vary in size and maturity. Um, national states make up the majority of um, members uh, C cert, but academic certs, financial sector certs, and private company certs, such as Panasonic and Group IB in Singapore, are also members. Yeah, so uh, one of the uh, collaboration activities that I would like to highlight in highlight in this session is uh, we having we do have our AP Cert Cyber Annual Drill. So uh, it's a um, the event that we get together and um, the check the uh, incident response uh, flow for each team. So to to re to re for the real realization of this drill, um, we create scenarios together and check the response status of member organization. So this year, this year we had a uh, 16th uh, drill and uh, the theme of the supply chain attack uh, with a total of 35, over 35 teams taking part of, including OIC CERT and Africa CERT members. So we actually extend uh, the invitation to the drill for a OIC CERT and also Africa CERT. So it's a one of the form of a, a regional collaboration and beyond um, the, the regional. Uh, and then, yeah, we are now uh, expected to have uh, more teams from, uh, from the participation from other uh, regional collaboration communities. Also inside the a, a, among, among in the AP CERN members, I think it's I should stop now to pass the floor to Karim. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Masa. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a immediate, uh, very quick question. Uh, so, how many teams are uh, how many members do you have from from how many countries in or economies? In AP CERN, you mean? Yeah. Yes, we have uh, thirty three teams from 24 countries and economies. I see, it's, I, I'm not sure how many economies we have in Asia, uh, uh, but it seems like it has a very good coverage, or uh, uh, it has very good coverage uh, among uh, AP region. Thank you very much. Uh, I also uh, think it's it's very interesting or valuable. Uh, AP said not work inside or within Asia Pacific. It, it also team up with uh, other region like Africa uh, for exercise or drill. Um, so that is a good segue to Karim's part. Uh, so Karim, now I like to give the floor to you. Uh, we like to know who Africa said is, uh, you know, how members of the community, uh, like certain Mauritius, uh, take advantage of a regional community. Or um, I also, you know, like to know uh, uh, how certain Mauritius engage with, even other than uh, Africa said, because, uh, for example, I see several activities at African Union on cybersecurity, but, uh, and anything, uh, from with your vast experience. So over to you, Karim. Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Isparky, and, and, and good morning, uh, everyone. And this is uh, 3 uh, 35 in the morning in Mauritius. Uh, first of all, uh, Isparky, uh, um, I thank you for uh, giving us the floor. So here, uh, I'm uh, having two hats, and first of all, of course, I'm heading the Mauritian uh, Compute Crew Emergency Response Team. And at the same time, uh, as Sparky mentioned, I'm, I'm working uh, and talking on behalf of uh, Africa as uh, And as Masa mentioned, like any uh, other search which we are talking about, AP search, so same like it's a regional search in Africa. And uh, this uh, particular Africa search has been uh, operating for quite some time, and then and the kind of activities which we are doing is, is, is not very different than what other regional certs are doing. And uh, especially we are uh, working on different things and, and incident handling uh, surely is, is one among them because as uh, Sparky mentioned, uh, Serge has been uh, talking about that 
with the fire uh, fighters. And, and once we are the firefighters, we have to work along with the different teams in Africa and along the globe in order to coordinate those uh, cyber incidents which we are, are talking about. So if uh, quickly uh, I uh, come back to the question that uh, how many uh, teams we have. So of course, uh, we all know that Africa is, is very big. We are having uh, 75 countries in Africa right now. We are having some 26 national search. Uh, the countries who have the national search, so it's in uh, Africa, and they're all uh, members of uh, Africa search, plus also other uh, organizations. They, they are uh, joining uh, Africa search uh, over, over the years. And, and the whole idea here of Africa search uh, is to uh, coordinate uh, cybersecurity incidents. And obviously, uh, we are uh, focusing very much on capacity uh, building uh, within uh, the continent. And uh, within uh, that particular uh, capacity building, uh, we have been uh, organizing a number of uh, activities where uh, uh, first and, and then uh, even Japan CERT has been actively supporting that. And, and uh, some, of, some of the activities where our first has been there is the first uh, technical symposium. Uh, which has been uh, organized uh, for a uh, few years and, and actively are first in Africa still working uh, together. Again, uh, Japan CERT has been uh, very instrumental uh, in providing uh, its resources to, to Africa CERT for many years, in fact, now down the line. And I think uh, Sparky, uh, we are thankful to, to Sparky all the way. Uh, where he has been actively supporting the cause of capacity building in Africa, and he has been traveling extensively uh, into the continent in order to, to, to uh, provide uh, capacity. So uh, technical symposium is one, and through that a symposium, number of uh, for, uh, activities are, are happening. And then uh, lately, we also have started a continental uh, cyber drill, and this uh, continental uh, cyber drill uh, is an activity where a uh, number of teams and number of countries are, are participating. So uh, already we had two uh, editions. So we started in 2021, 2022, and this time uh, we are going to organize in Maputo, Mozambique from the 9th and the 10th of uh, and November, where we are expecting again more than some uh, 35 to 36 teams. So. Uh, that number is, is growing, but again, the idea is to build capacity, build a preparedness of the teams. And then uh, this is where uh, different activities we are doing as part of the cyber tool. So uh, right from the TTX to, to capture the flag and then the technical simulation exercises, uh, they are all happening. And, and then uh, as the Sparky mentioned, that we, we, we are opening it to the uh, uh, ac across the region so that more and more teams, not only from Africa, they could join from other regions and then we can uh, share their experiences of incident uh, uh, response so that uh, we understand what kind of a threat surface are, are there in other regions. And, and accordingly, based on to that, we are able to manage that. So uh, that, 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 that's something uh, what is in there. And then uh, even uh, if uh, we see, uh, again, a uh, few activities which we are trying to promote apart from many other, because uh, like any other uh, regional cert, we are also the part of the uh, different uh, forums. So uh, in, in uh, different forums, if, if, if I talk about, uh, we are the part of the ITU DSC 17 uh, AFR activities, we are part of the ITU D4 uh, C cert capacity building, uh, we are a part of the GFCE uh, partner since uh, 2021. And uh, uh, we uh, have been also involved into uh, writing the engagement strategy for first in Africa uh, since 2015. Uh, this Africa cert also has introduced, uh, in, uh, introduced a Professor Suguru uh, Yamaguchi Fellowship. And I think uh, Sparky is here and, 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 and uh, Again, uh, Professor, uh, uh, he has been supporting these activities and, and, and uh, again, he uh, did uh, those uh, fellowship, uh, started fellowship program uh, again into uh, Africa. And uh, we are a part of the symposium, as I mentioned. Uh, we are a part of the DF, uh, DFC cert, OIC cert. Again, we are uh, working actively with uh, ICANN. So uh, in a nutshell, uh, more and more teams are uh, joining uh, Africa's third because more and more teams uh, 
uh, are, or the countries they are setting up their national spheres. So that, that's what we have been uh, trying so that because out of 54 countries, the number of uh, uh, sphere teams in Africa is fairly lower than other regions. And, uh, and I believe even FOST has been uh, promoting and focusing onto that so that more and more teams are uh, able to, uh, countries uh, in particular, are able to have their national spirit. So, and and that, that is something uh, even uh, we are uh, promoting all the way. So, uh, one specific activity which also I'd like to mention here is information sharing. And information sharing, I believe, is important across the regions. And that's what we are trying to do uh, within Africa. We have come up with our own different platforms in different countries of the teams. And then these teams, uh, they are uh, sharing that particular information, and that's what we are uh, promoting at. So maybe I'll, I'll quickly, I'll stop here uh, so that uh, if there are more questions, I'll be able to take it up later. So in, in a nutshell, that's what Africa uh, does very much around uh, capacity building incident uh, coordination, and then uh, obviously uh, threat preparedness exercises. Back to you, Spaz, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Karim. Um, uh, it's it's good to know. Um, you know, I still remember uh, Africa has a little bit more than fifty five zero countries uh, in the giant continents, and uh, you have yeah, you you may you, you succeed in attracting uh, many states to be part of this community. Uh, I like to clarify, Karim. Uh, if, for example, ISPs in Mauritius or South Africa like to join Africa Said, uh, can you do? Uh, can they be a member of Africa Said? Yes, uh, they can. To answer your question, I thought yes, they can. And then uh, maybe uh, you have been asking the support of, from how Mauritius has been supporting Africa Said. Uh, then quickly, maybe in a, a sentence or two. Uh, we are again, uh, along with Africa Third, and providing uh, support for building capacity uh, for different things. So, and that's what we have tried to do. That we are engaging with different teams, and then uh, adding their uh, expertise in order to conduct any activity which we are trying to do. So, and this is helping us in a way to build capacity along with other partners, international partners, uh, for example, first and many more. So that's that's where uh, things are happening. Uh, in this uh, fashion, thank you. Thank you so much, Karim. Uh, it's it's good to know. Uh, since in the beginning, uh, you have very strong ties with a global community. Like first, uh, although it seems like there's a, a pretty regional challenges, like uh, you know uh, the the wider uh, um, the 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 big continent uh, was. Uh, uh, lots of lots of uh, how do I say uh, the gaps in the in the capacity uh, not only for cyber security but for for other matters. Uh, thank you all. Uh, thank you all three panelists for your uh, for your remarks. And uh, I also like to add two points before we go to the the Q A part. First, uh, uh, sorry for someone from. Uh, for, from Europe or other region other than Asian and Africa. Uh, as we have like episode in Asia or Africa said in Africa, uh, uh, so TFC suit and other uh, organizations are pretty active in getting CSU team together in Europe. Um, and of course, EU's uh, trying to consolidate the uh, uh, cybersecurity talent. Uh, for, for their project. And uh, again, Pakistan, uh, an ongoing effort in Pacific Islands, again, to get the CSATs from all the uh, island nations. Uh, and also, we, uh, we have uh, ASEAN third, uh, who I think, uh, who I, uh, who, uh, which uh, they will be officially established uh, soon. So, um, Today, uh, we don't have a representative from those regions, but uh, I'm, I, I like to make sure uh, things are happening in, in the region. Uh, and second, my, my second point is, uh, there are also collaboration uh, of CSIRTs uh, 
stemmed from uh, stemmed from a strategic alliance, not from the computer security or cyber security field. Uh, for example, NATO has uh, they have been trying to foster cyber security cooperation among NATO member states. Uh, Quad. Uh, many of you haven't haven't heard this before, but Quad security dialogue between Australia, India, Japan, United States um, is trying to follow that path too. And I also heard uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization SCO uh, led, led by uh, or moderated by China uh, convene a regular meeting by C sets of uh, member states. Uh, finally, there's a similar attempt by CIS. Uh, CIS is a Eurasian intergovernmental uh, security di dialogue, not, not alliance, uh, including Russia. But they uh, at CIS, there's also a, a you know a very active sharing and cooperation among uh, C sets of each uh, each each states. So uh, these intergovernmental efforts can be distinct from, distinct from, from for example, APSARA first, because uh, first, I think most of the members are from private, pr pr private sectors, uh, APSARA as well, and I just learned from Karim that um, uh, private sector can be part of Africa third. So um, there's clearly a difference in the uh, membership status and uh, you know, as CSAT network are uh, multi-stake. <laughs> <Ooh -hoo. laughs> uh, multi-stakeholder organization. Uh, so that means either AP Soda first or uh, Africa third. A private sector or civil society uh, can play a crucial role. Anyways, uh, with contribution from our panel, uh, we now understand how those global or regional uh, collaboration mechanism works. Uh, thank you to all the panelists. Okay, uh, so who was calling you? <laughs> this one, okay. Um, okay, um, so now I'd like to ask a few questions to, to our panel. Um, uh, but by the way, Serge, Kareem, we have like 30 people sitting in a room uh, watching carefree, you know, watching carefree, you know, your fight at 3.45 in the morning. So, yeah, please stay awake for another 15 minutes. Um, and I also encourage audience uh, on-site or online to prepare your question as well, uh, because in the next segment, I will ask you uh, for any questions to, to panelists. So uh, I first like to ask this to, to Serge. Uh, since um, before your current position, you, you also work for, worked for uh, messaging companies in Switzerland and others, and you have quite a rich experience in dealing with uh, international organization and civil society in Switzerland and, and everywhere. Um, is it, you know, from from your own perspective or from first point of view, is it is it important to protect the uh, under-resourced civil society, or it's it's simply not the <coughs> role of first? So thanks, Parky. This is a really a very good question. This is something that that sometimes keeps me awake a little bit or prevent, makes me go asleep slower. First members are mostly from the private sector. They're typically tech companies that, that are mature enough to realize that they actually need IT security. They're banks because banks know that they're attacked because that's where the money is and where the criminals go. Other parts of member, the membership communities are, are states because states realize that this is important. But really what we are missing is civil society. We are missing many of the organizations that protect individual users, that protect minorities, that protect uh, groups that, that are under pressure. Part of this is explained through uh, the resources these people have. Sometimes I have the impression a C-cert is in this community or the security person in this community is just one person and 
and Durkett and uh, and these people just they don't have the resources to to kind of apply for first membership and become a member yet we exactly need these people we as a community as a global community need to start thinking about how we can support this that sounds all nice and dandy and easy but it's actually quite the challenge because for very good reasons quite often members of civil society distrust big companies they distrust states and that is a challenge and again i think we have to to get the firefighter paradigm the firefighter doesn't really care if, if the house of a, a billionaire is a fire or a poor person it should just shouldn't, shouldn't make a difference and that's the same the same way we have here so our hope really is, is that that civil society gets up and starts talking to us and I do know a lot of people in the first community that are more than happy to start helping and supporting these communities, appreciating that they don't have the resources that, that many of us within first have. So here is a pledge also to a lot of the organizations present at the IGF, start talking to us. This is too important. Thank you so much, Saoj. Uh, now, I really miss you, uh, you know, uh, miss the fact that you cannot sit with us this time. But thank you so much, Saoj. And for uh, Karim and Masa, I have same question for two of you. Um, in what circumstances have you faced or have you felt a mismatch between uh, expectation outside your community uh, and your own capacity. I think people, like myself, asking Africa Sad or Ibiza to do this, uh, I, you're, you're, in, in those cases, do you think you are self-sufficient and can respond to any request outside, or you have any, you know, you identify any area uh, you need to work on? Uh, so, not sure who goes first. Uh, Maybe, Kadim, can Maybe you go first? Le le ladies first, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> ladies want you to start first. <laughs> All right, no problem, uh, okay, okay, okay. So, uh, no, 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 uh, coming back to uh, this aggression uh, sparking, uh, this is uh, again interesting because, uh, and, and that's uh, what we have been uh, talking about and that's what we should discuss because uh, uh, capacity and and then the the the, the uh, to deliver uh, uh, to your uh, constituency or to your region uh, is uh, in fact uh, is important and and this is uh, again a, a very demanding and a daunting task for any uh, regional cert and and then the uh, same applies to 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 uh, Africa cert and and uh, and uh, just to uh, put it uh, on record here that. Uh, we have been uh, trying to because though uh, our uh, team size is is, is smaller than uh, other uh, regional certs in in different things, but the the way of modus of operandi of Africa cert is a little bit different because we are trying to uh, gather teams together, and with those teams we are trying to execute the needs of the region. So I think uh, that's a little bit uh, differently uh, we we are uh, trying to to operate and. Uh, yes, uh, lots of uh, capacity building uh, is uh, happening along with other stakeholders in, in different things. Um, actively, Africa CERT has been uh, able to, to uh, form different uh, working groups at the same time, and, and, and we are uh, trying to uh, extract uh, the expertise of uh, experts uh, within the region in order to build up uh, the capacity uh, around those areas. And especially if I talk about uh, uh, critical infrastructures, if, if I talk about uh, the, the cyber diplomacy, if, if I talk about the SCADA systems, if, if I talk about information sharing. So these, these, these kind of things uh, are uh, happening already. And uh, I believe that especially on the part of the critical infrastructure security, uh, that's what the region is picking it up because uh, if we see uh, Africa from other regions, so uh, their focus on uh, building capacity around uh, critical infrastructures have been a fairly uh, slower uh, than uh, uh, other regions, and and the reason is of course the the the, the uh, expertise and 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 then uh, also uh, in in terms of 
uh, their uh, preparedness uh, for different uh, reasons. So uh, I believe that, that that's the focus lie for us. And, and from there, uh, we are, are, are trying to uh, uh, pick it up. And, and, and this is where uh, with the uh, different agencies, uh, we are trying to train people uh, within the region uh, on uh, critical infrastructure uh, protection and specific training programs have started. So it's just the beginning, but of course that's the challenge for us where uh, more uh, teams and more countries, they could be exposed to this kind of training so that they are able to well uh, uh, protect their infrastructure or critical infrastructure uh, better. So I think I'll stop here uh, if possible. Thank you very much. Uh, to me, it sounds most of the issue you, you, issue or um, challenges you have right now is a uh, is a is, is no not regional. Uh, it it sounds we are facing the same or pretty similar challenges uh, together at the same time. Masa. Okay, so um, honestly, I don't have any big difference between the expect expectation from um, outer communities and what, what we do in, in AP CERT. So um, instead, I'd like to uh, mention about the, the the challenging we had, if I may. All right, so um, um, the one of the challenges that we face as AP CERT is uh, it's challenging to keep the in members' interaction going. Um, uh, after the pandemic. So the basically, um, before the pandemic, we had um, several times to, to get together, uh, all me uh, for example, annual general meetings and also um, steering committee meeting to exchange the honest view or uh, the current you know, status for each organization. But during the pandemic, we had to end up with um, uh, communication online so right now we have uh, we we are so excited to restart the uh, in-person activities, and then uh, we had um, steering committee meeting in September last month, exactly same place here, and it was the uh, the first time in four years. So yeah, we'd like to resume this kind of activity again, and. Uh, we also uh, like to continue to reach out to the support those team in the region that are eligible for AP CERT uh, membership but are not yet members. So uh, basically the Asia Pacific region uh, refers to the uh, AP NIC boundaries. So there are, so, uh, there are some uh, countries where that is not a uh, member of AP CERT yet. For example, um, Pacific Island, uh, certain Pacific Islands and also uh, middle, uh, middle Asia. So yeah, we'd like to yeah, talk about this topic and extend the, the interest uh, to, for joining AP CERT. Um, and then for us, uh, another topic is for us, it's more important than ever before not to lose a sense of balance in order to uh, maintain neutrality. Um, to give an example of China, uh, mainland China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Macau are all equally represented as independent teams in AP CERT. And such an organization is very unique given the um, current circumstances. Um, so that's uh, the one of the key uh, the Secretariat and also steering committee is focusing on and we try to keep a neutrality as much as possible to maintain the, the, the one of the great features of APC. Thank you so much. Uh, well, the, the last part of your, 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 uh, your statement, the, the neutrality is, is pretty uh, difficult to define or hard to achieve, uh, but um, I, I, I get your point. Uh, as a secretary, you like to serve uh, for your members equally, I think that's the you know uh, that's the that's you like to uh, achieve. Uh, thank you, uh, all the panelists. And now I like to open the floor for audience for your questions. Uh, we have two microphones, so please come up in front of one of one of those. Who goes first? 
We don't see any question online at the moment. Okay. Yeah. See. Oh, great. Ah, so please identify yourself before 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 question. Morning, everyone. Uh, Clay from First. So uh, same organization as Surge. Um, just a kind of broad question for everyone, um, particularly um, around the regional networks. What can the regional networks do to improve cybersecurity more broadly that they're not doing already? What are some kind of ambitious activities that you think um, organizations like AP Cert, Paxon, Africa Cert, C Cert Americas, you know, name name them all, could do to kind of spread resilience um, beyond just the incident response community? So I guess this is a question to mainly for Kareem, Masa, or maybe myself. Uh, Kareem, if I may go first, or like to pick up this question. Um, the way you uh, prefer, uh, it's possible. You can go ahead, and then I can. Uh, sure. Uh, thank you. Come so, back later. Uh, my response to the, the 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 question on how well the how regional uh, CSAT network can help help mitigate the the, the problem. Um, we sometimes see see regional threat or the, the regional issues in cyberspace. For, for t take uh, give you an example. Uh, there's a very popular uh, Korean uh, IPTV set box, which is quite vulnerable. And since it's a, it's a very popular device, uh, can be sold, uh, uh, and it is, is um, widely used in Japan, Hong Kong, Singapore, maybe Malaysia, and of course, Korea. Um, even, even to this date, uh, we have similar type of the, the, the you know, uh, regionally popular products. Uh, and in those cases, um, for example, in AP third, uh, there's a, a joint traffic monitoring project, and we see spike uh, in uh, certain uh, ports of uh, TCP uh, traffic, and can at least tell uh, affected countries or affected uh, C sets of affected region to check to see if uh, if something if if there is something they like to to address. So the existence of regional threat is something uh, uh, is uh, to me the major motivation to uh, maintain the regional collaboration framework. Uh, Kareem? Thank you, uh, thank you, Sparky, and and uh, thank you, Cleve, for this uh, wonderful uh, question. In fact, because. Uh, this this uh, cuts across all, all the regions, and as you rightly said, but uh, again, uh, I have uh, the way uh, I want to uh, I want to answer this uh, question. There there are different things. Obviously, if I look uh, at the African uh, region, and and uh, one of the things is uh, how do we manage uh, threat best? And and once uh, how do we manage uh, threat best? And the way we see in in Africa. So uh, monitoring of threats uh, is, is, is a kind of a, a challenge for each and every country. And the reason uh, is that different countries, they have a different level of maturity. And some uh, countries, they have started a little earlier. Some of the countries, they have started uh, some five, six, seven years back. And some of the countries, they're starting now. And once they, they are uh, starting now and, and then five years back and then earlier, they have a different level of maturity. And, and we being a third community, uh, I believe, and uh, other regions, they have done it. Uh, how can we join hands together uh, in order for us to monitor things uh, uh, regionally or, or if, uh, specific to a particular region where uh, different teams, they could join hands together in order to manage uh, threats? And, and one example uh, could be sort of a, a regional uh, monitoring uh, and, and information uh, sharing support. Uh, which the, the, the countries uh, they can have. And, and just on to that part, like SARDIC in, in, in Africa, Southern African Development Community, they have uh, set up a SARDIC, uh, uh, SARDIC uh, task, uh, CSER task force. 
And this uh, Sardex Research Task Force has been set up still in a very initial stage with a, a, a view that uh, we can have a common goal and then all different teams, those who have the capacity, they are able to uh, help the countries in, in, the, in, the, in the case of a cyber uh, a crisis. So that, that's one component, but I think the second component also, which we need to understand is that the uh, technical infrastructure, which is very important and technical infrastructure, because uh, in, in, in terms of number of things, technical uh, infrastructure for information sharing, uh, technical uh, infrastructure for a bot uh, detection, uh, technical infrastructure for a uh, honeypot uh, setup, and then uh, combining all these together and then uh, monitoring uh, somewhere from uh, a security operation center. So uh, this is uh, not a new uh, concept, but this is a kind of a concept which is required in the region so that everybody could help each other in order for to manage uh, threats better. So I think uh, that's what is coming to my mind and, and, and this is where I want to stop. Thank you very much. Back to you, Sparky. Thank you, Karim. Thank you very much. Uh, we have another question, please. Uh, good morning and thank you to the panel. Uh, my name is Tom. I'm from the National Institute of Cybersecurity in Taiwan. And uh, I uh, just uh, am here to say that we're here to help. Uh, we are a newly established institute and we have a, a mandate to collaborate internationally. And uh, as uh, uh, Toyama-san uh, said, uh, we're also really excited to get back into physical interactions. And so my question for the panel is, I'm looking at uh, different models that countries are using to bring people together physically to improve uh, cyber capability in different countries. And I saw, for example, in 2021, uh, Lithuania established a regional cyber defense center, and they've been uh, gathering together with Ukraine, Georgia, Poland, and the USA in person to help improve the cyber defense of the region. Uh, so they're all quite advanced uh, cyber actors. But uh, should we, uh, those of us that have the capability to fly places and meet in person, be conducting those kind of activities uh, around the world? Thank you. Thank you very much. That's a, that's a pretty interesting question. Uh, but, uh, but I'd like to begin with, I'm not sure if, you know, the, the, the Slovenian regional collaboration uh, is done by CSET in the region or uh, Militaries. Okay. Um, so we see, um, of course, uh, many activities by our uh, armed force, Ministry of Defense, and uh, and other uh, forces uh, in the region. Um, but as far as I can, I can, I can recall, uh, there's no, you know, international, uh, permanent. Uh, Joint Operational Center, which Japan is part of. But, um, so, Shkreem, do you have any thoughts on this question? Yes, so, <clears throat> I think what you kind of implied is that the, the in-person gatherings are about kind of building up capacity, building up know-how and stuff like this. I would wager that the real importance about these type of meetings and about the physical get togethers is to actually form trust because trust is the fuel that instance response works on. If, if you were dealing with a, an incident, you're typically dealing with something that you don't, don't want to be have public. It's kind of embarrassing. Your host organization got hacked. So you only want to talk to this to people you trust. You trust them that they don't kind of blur this out to the rest of the world. Uh, you have to share secrets. And I think that's the main reason why you should be doing this. And this also ties in a little bit into uh, the previous questions about what the regional organization should do. In my view, what really distinguishes instance response from say a trade association or something like this is that we build communities that trust each other and that kind of share a common language. If you look at first mission, one of the three missions we have is building or working on a global language. And this is not about French versus German or something. It's about having the same understanding of the challenges and being able during a crisis to talk to each other and to work with each other. Again, if we take the firefighter equivalent, 
if you're a firefighter and you kind of really going into a house that's burning, you just have to trust the people outside to do the right thing. And I think that for me is the important thing. And that's really what these meetings are. And I know you, Sparky, from many of the board meetings where we had a lot of discussions. And what I really take out is that if I have an issue in Japan, I actually trust you to do the right things. And I tell you a lot of things that I wouldn't really tell many other people. So I think for me, that is the essence of getting us together. And that's the justification why I should, still should travel during times where we have climate change and where we should reuse traveling. Thank, thank you, Serge. Uh, we, are, <laughs> we are running up, running up the time. So Karim, can you, can you provide a very short answer to the question and also uh, you know, the final piece of advice or message for our audience? And then, uh, so go back to you, um, just for 15 seconds of your last message. Masa, as you, you too. Thank you. Karim. Uh, thank you, uh, Sparky. I think uh, just to uh, answer this uh, question, uh, something like a confidence uh, building measure, uh, which is uh, obviously part of the cyber uh, diplomacy, but I think it, it, it very much applies into uh, this uh, context. And uh, confidence building measure uh, cannot happen unless and until we don't sit together and then we talk to each other. And this is very much uh, based on through the trust building. So, and, 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 that, and that's something uh, has started in Africa and, and many other regions and Asia I know and, and, and Europe I know. Uh, again, uh, in Africa. So if if uh, we uh, sit together, and, and that's what we have uh, started trying to do with uh, SARDEC, and, and I think uh, this will work. And, and uh, why it will work? Because uh, we have to have the trust of the people, and once people, they trust you, they come back to you. And once they come back to you, definitely things get better in terms of incident uh, resolution. So uh, to short answer of this question, of course, we can uh, discuss uh, four hours, but I think confidence building measure is important for us to be able to uh, outreach the different teams and the communities in order to uh, resolve incidents. That, 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 that's uh, the answer for, for this question. And then uh, I think uh, the final uh, 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 thing which I wanted to say, which Isparky uh, has asked is, uh, I think we have to uh, join hands together because we, we uh, need each other as a community uh, to uh, mm, uh, build uh, resilience uh, around our systems and infrastructure, and, and alone we cannot do much. And, and this is where I think this forum is going to uh, help us, uh, because we have the expertise, we have the experts, and then I think we can all join hands together to get things better for the continent and for the region. So thank you very much. With my final words, uh, Ispagi, back to you. Thank you, Karim. Uh, so, Masa, 15 seconds. 15. Right. Um, I, I believe that the future development of cybersecurity at the regional level should not only deal with emergency response when needed, but rather continue with the normal collaborative activities such as drills and events in APs, a CSET community, which make more sense for emergency coordination. And those who are uh, interested in such activities, please refer to our episode ANIA report, which is available uh, for everyone. Yeah, thank you. So, 15 seconds. So, speaking for first, I mean, my big wish really is that we have strong cyber security communities all around the globe and that these communities can work together and that they do the right thing. So, we also should continue thinking about what is it CSIRT should be doing and what is it they shouldn't be doing. But that's for our next panel. Thanks. All right, thank you, panelists, and thank you, our uh, audience. Um, this is the end of the session. Uh, thanks uh, for everyone for joining this panel. Thank you very much, and see you next IGF. Thank you. Karim Soj, thank you very much. Now you can go to bed. Yes, I will. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Pleasure. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye, everyone.